What is a linear system? Here's the definition. A linear system is simply a collection of one or more linear equations. Well, what's a linear equation? It's an equation which all variables have exponent equal to 1. There's no squares, cubes, etc. And there's no variables inside of functions, such as square root, logs, trig functions, or variables and denominators. So here's an example of a linear equation, just 3x equals 5. The variable x is to the first power, and there's no other functional forms in the equation. Here's another example of a linear equation. 3x minus 4y equals 6. This has two variables, and here's a three-variable example. Here's some examples of equations that aren't linear. For example, x cubed minus 4x plus 5 equals 0. Well, there's a cube in there, so that is not linear. Log of quantity x minus 5 equals 14, not linear because there's a logarithm and the variables inside the log. Variables inside the square root in this next example, not linear. And here are the variables in the denominator, also not linear. Here's an example of a linear system. 4x plus 2y equals 1. Negative 3x plus y equals 5. x minus 5y equals negative 3. There are three equations and two unknowns, so we refer to this as a 3 by 2 linear system. Here's another example. x plus 3y minus z equals 1. One equation in three unknowns, so this is a 1 by 3 linear system. Another example. In this system we have three unknowns, a, b, and c, and two equations. So two equations and three unknowns gives us a 2 by 3 linear system. Notice that not all the variables are in all the equations. In particular, the second equation is missing the b variable, and that's perfectly OK. In linear algebra, we typically don't use alphabetic variables such as x, y, z, and w, and so forth. Instead, we use indexed variables such as x1, x2, x3, x4. And this allows us to use as many variables as we like. It also helps us arrange our equations and systems in a more orderly fashion. So for example, 4x1 minus 3x2 plus 8x3 is equal to negative 5. Also, equations are usually written in standard form. That means all the variable terms are on the left and all the constants are on the right side of the equation. So for example, this last equation is in standard form. Try the following on your own. Rewrite this equation in standard form. Go ahead and put the video on pause and when you resume we'll check your answer. So here's the solution. Here's our original equation. We're just going to add and subtract terms from both sides and get all the variable terms on the left and the constant on the right and we have standard form. So symbolically we can write the general linear equation in n variables x1 down to xn in standard form as follows. a1 x1 plus a2 x2 all the way down to a n x n is equal to b, where the a's and b are constants. So here's the general m by n linear system in standard form. m refers to the number of equations, n the number of variables, so our first equation looks like a11 x1, a12 x2, all the way down to a1 n times xn is equal to some constant b1. Our second equation, 
and so forth down to the last equation which is the mth equation. Again the a's and the b's are constants. A solution of a linear system in n variables is an n-tuple in Rn, in other words a vector in Rn, such that when a1 down to an are substituted for x1 down to xn respectively, all the equations in the system are true. Note that it's common to write a solution horizontally a1 down to an also. For example, 5 comma negative 3 is a solution of the following system. And why is that? Remember in 5 negative 3, 5 represents the the value of x1 and negative 3 represents the value of x2 and so when we substitute 5 for x1 and negative 3 for x2 in the first equation it's true. We do the same thing in the second equation we end up also with a true equation. So that is a solution of the system. 8, 0, 0 is not a solution of the following system. Now why is that? So we take the first equation, substitute 8 for x1, 0 for x2, 0 for x3. That's a true equation. But if we do it with the second equation, 8 for x1, 0 for x3, you end up with a false equation. And if any of the equations are false, then this is not a solution of the system. We don't even need to check the other equations. So try this one on your own. Determine whether this vector, 1, negative 1, 5, negative 5, is a solution of this system. Put the video on pause. And so the solution is no. Uh, this vector fails to satisfy the third equation. When you plug it in to the third equation, you end up with a false equation. The collection of all solutions of a linear system is called the solution set of the system. So note, for an m by n linear system, the solution set is a collection of vectors in Rn, because they are n variables. Two linear systems are said to be equivalent if they have exactly the same solution sets. So for example, here's system 1 and here's system 2. And it's easy to verify that the solution of system 1 is a single vector. Three negative one. But the same vector also solves system 2 so these are equivalent systems. Later, using matrix methods, we're going to develop a strategy for solving linear systems, which involves taking an original system and converting it to an equivalent system, which is easier to solve. Solving the equivalent system means that we solve the original system. The above two systems are an example of this. System 2 is easier to solve, and solving that means that we're solving system 1. We'll cover these techniques in a later lecture. So try this on your own. Find the solution set of this system using a technique that you learned in an earlier algebra course. In particular, the hint is to use the elimination method. So put the video on pause and we'll check solutions after you resume. So we're going to call this equation 1 and equation 2 in the solution. So using the elimination method, 3 times equation 1 gives us this, and 5 times equation 2 gives us this equation. When we add these together, the left side gives us 34x1, the right side gives us 34, and so we can solve for x1 
x1 is equal to 1. Now we can take that 1 and back substitute, say, into the first equation to get the following equation. And now we can solve for x2. So the solution of this system is the vector 1, comma, negative 1. Why do we just get one solution in this case? Is there a more vivid way of understanding this? If we graph both equations, it's very clear why this is the case. In particular, if we solve both equations for x2, and then graph x2 versus x1 on a rectangular coordinate system, we end up with two lines that intersect in a single point. That point of intersection is in fact the solution of the system. So that's why there's just one solution in this case. Let's look at the solution set of another system. If we look at the left sides of both equations, they're equal, but on the right sides they're not equal, so already we see there could be a problem with trying to solve this system. In particular, we'll just subtract one equation from the other. We end up with 0 on the left side and negative 1 on the right. Well, 0 can never equal negative 1. This is impossible. And what this is saying is if you could find a solution to both equations, then you can prove 0 is equal to negative 1, which is impossible. Therefore, there cannot be a solution. This is an algebraic method based on elimination, but here's the graphical method, which gives us a clear picture of why there is no solution. Here's the equations with x2 solved. When we graph those, we end up with parallel lines. Parallel lines don't intersect, so there is no common point on these lines, no point of intersection. Therefore, the system has no solution. Here's another example. Let's find the solution set of this system. So using the elimination method again, negative 2 times equation 1 plus t equation 2 gives us 0 is equal to 0, which is always true. And that's indicating that we have infinitely many solutions. In fact, we can solve, say, any of the equations for x2 we get x2 equals negative 3x1. So that's telling us that the solution set consists of all vectors of the form x1, negative 3x1, where x1 could be any real number, which means that there are infinitely many solutions. That's a way to see it algebraically. What about graphically? So again, solving for x2 in both equations gives us these equations. We graph them and we end up with the same line for equation 1 and equation 2. Well, two overlapping lines have infinitely many points of intersection and therefore we have infinitely many solutions. In general, every linear system, no matter how many equations and how many unknowns, has either no solution, one solution, or infinitely many solutions. Now I state this without proof, but we'll see why this is true using matrix methods in another lecture. So an example, no linear system can have exactly two solutions. And why is that the case? Because if it has two, then it's got to have a lot more because it can't have exactly two. It can have infinitely many though. So it's got to have infinitely many. Why are linear systems important? Because they arise naturally from the mathematically simplest input-output relationships, that is, linear relationships. So here's an example from a previous video, a video called What is a Matrix? Here's an input-output relationship between inputs x1 and y1 and outputs x2 and y2. 
where the inputs represent a point before it's rotated and the outputs represent the point after it's rotated 45 degrees counterclockwise. So here's a picture before it's rotated, here's the point after it's rotated 45 degrees counterclockwise, here's the point. So suppose we know that the rotated point has these coordinates. We want to know the original point where it came from, x1, y1. So to do so, we solve this linear system. And not too hard to solve this. You can verify for yourself that the solution is that the original point is 0, 1. So that's a linear system that arises from a rotation problem. What do we do with linear systems? We generally solve them using matrix methods. We'll cover these in detail in a later lecture. For right now, I want to introduce two matrices coefficient matrix and the augmented matrix which are associated with a linear system. To illustrate this let's look at this example of a linear system. Two equations and three variables. Here's the coefficient matrix. You simply write down a matrix with the coefficients of x1, x2, and x3. So the first equation gives this first row. The second equation gives the second row. And that's the coefficient matrix. Here's the augmented matrix. It's the same as the coefficient matrix, except for it's got one extra column, and that column is what we call the data column. It's the constants on the right-hand side of the equations. So it's the coefficient matrix plus an extra column. Typically, we separate the coefficients from the data using a dotted vertical line. Try this example on your own. Write down the coefficient matrix and augmented matrix for the following linear system. And notice that some variables are missing in some equations, so think about what we're going to do with those in the coefficient and augmented matrices. Put this on pause and we'll check answers after you resume. So here's the solution. Here's the original system. And we can think of this in the following way. R rewrite the equations putting placeholders for the missing variable terms. And then, wherever there's a missing variable, put down 0 times that variable. And where the coefficients are 1, you might find it helpful putting 1's in. And now it's very straightforward to write down the coefficient matrix. Let's copy down the coefficients. And the augmented matrix. Similarly, copy down the coefficients and the data. Now this intermediate step can be considered a mental step. You don't have to write it down. I often don't, but if it helps you, by all means, write it down. So try this one. Write down the linear system corresponding to the following augmented matrix. Again, put the video on pause. And we'll check answers together. Here's the solution. So think about it this way. Just go ahead and copy down the coefficients from the augmented matrix and the data. But notice that the coefficients of 1 and 0 don't really have to be there. So in the final form, we want to eliminate those just for simplicity. And again, the intermediate step doesn't need to be written down if you could do it mentally. So recall from earlier in the video the general form of an m by n linear system. It's given as such. So the corresponding coefficient matrix is given by this. And note that this is an m by n matrix. And the augmented matrix is given by this. 
and this is an M by N plus 1 matrix, one extra column. We're going to see that a common theme in linear algebra is the interplay between linear systems and matrices. Matrices are going to help us solve linear systems, and linear systems are going to help us solve matrix problems. More later. Let's briefly review what we covered in this video. The definition of linear system, linear equation, index variable, standard form of a linear equation, solution set of a linear system, equivalent linear systems, number of solutions of a linear system, coefficient matrix, and augmented matrix.